Today, I simply want to share with you a psalm that has really touched me. At times when I'm overwhelmed and I want to pray, but I can't find the words to speak, I simply read this psalm and I offer it as a prayer to the Lord. And as I read it, I want you to keep something in mind. David mentions enemies. However, when I apply this psalm to my life, the enemies I'm talking about are not physical enemies, but rather, I sometimes have to face an enemy called discouragement. Sometimes it's called anxiety or worry. These are all enemies. So for the next few moments, as I read this precious psalm from the Word of God, I encourage you to open up your heart to the Lord and cast all your burdens on Him. Psalm 27, verses 1 through 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me alone now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Now let us pray. My Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only Son of the living God. King Jesus, you are my light and my salvation. And because of that, whom shall I fear? What shall I be afraid of? When Jesus Christ our Lord is our refuge and the fortress of our lives, whom shall we dread? If God is for us, who can be against us? No one, because we serve an almighty, all-powerful, all-conquering God. Even if the wicked come up against us, we will not fear. Even if an army encamps against us, our hearts will not fear because Jesus Christ holds all power. Lord, you're the one who has the final say. Father, my prayer is what your word says in Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, in his presence, all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the delightful loveliness and majestic grandeur of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Lord, I trust you because in the day of trouble, you will be my shelter. You will always be my hiding place. You will lift me up on a rock. Because of this, I will sing praises to your name, O Lord. Your word in Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, it says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. 
let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us out of the darkness, and we thank you for shining your light on our hearts. We can now declare that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We were once lost, but you have now called us to be yours. May your light shine within our lives, Lord. Let your light be seen in our character. Let your light be seen in our words and in our actions. Father, each and every day, may it be all about you. May we live to exalt you. May we live to praise you and worship you because you are an awesome God. You are the almighty God. Lord Jesus, be praised. Let your light shine and be seen in how I walk in this life and how I conduct myself. Thank you for your word, dear God. For it says in Micah chapter 7, verse 8, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I pray that in all I do, may I reflect your love. May I reflect your mercy to those around me. Thank you, Lord, for inviting me to be a part of your plan. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For a moment, I want to encourage you to meditate on Psalm 27 today. In its entirety, Psalm 27 encapsulates David's deep trust in God's protection, guidance, and presence. And I believe that this is a passage that invites us to place our confidence in God, even in the face of challenges, and to seek Him with all our heart. Just as David found comfort and courage in his relationship with God, we too can draw strength from our faith in the midst of life's trials. And so Psalm chapter 27, verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David begins by proclaiming his unwavering trust in God. He uses powerful metaphors, light and salvation, to convey that God illuminates his path and rescues him from danger. David's confidence in God's protection leads him to ask a rhetorical question. If God is on his side, there is no one to fear. This verse sets the tone for an entire psalm, emphasizing the strength of his faith in God's guidance and refuge. Verse 2. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Here, David acknowledges the existence of enemies and challenges that may come up against him. However, He firmly believes that God will cause his enemies to stumble and fail in their attempt to harm him. This verse reflects David's assurance that God's power is greater than any threat he faces. Verse 3, Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. David's confidence in God's protection continues to shine through. He uses strong imagery of an army besieging him and war breaking out, emphasizing the severity of the challenges he may encounter, yet 
he remains unshaken in his faith, declaring that his heart will not fear and he will maintain his confidence in God's deliverance. Verse 4, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. David expresses his deepest desire to be in the presence of God. He longs to dwell in God's house, not just for a moment, but for all the days of his life. This reflects David's thirst for intimacy with God and his eagerness to experience the beauty and wonder of God's presence. Verse five, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. David reaffirms his trust in God's protection and refuge. He believes that in times of trouble, God will provide safety and shelter. The image of being set high upon a rock symbolizes being placed above danger and adversity. Verse six. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. David envisions a future where he will triumph over his enemies. He anticipates offering sacrifices and praises to God with shouts of joy, celebrating God's faithfulness and deliverance. Verse 7, hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. In this verse, David shifts to a heartfelt plea. He calls upon God to hear his prayers and to respond with mercy and grace. David recognizes his dependence on God's compassion and desires an intimate connection with him. Verse 8, my heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. David's heart prompts him to seek God's face. He responds to the call of his heart, expressing his determination to seek God's presence with zeal and devotion. Verse 9, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. David acknowledges his reliance on God's help and pleads for God's continued presence. He asks God not to turn away from him, recalling the history of God's guidance and salvation in his life. Verse 10. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. David acknowledges that even if his earthly relationships falter, he is confident that God will never abandon him. This verse reflects David's deep conviction in God's unwavering love and acceptance. Verse 11, teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. David desires to know God's ways and seeks his guidance. He asks for direction and wisdom to navigate his challenges, knowing that God's guidance will lead him on the right path. Verse 12, do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me spouting malicious accusations. David recognizes the threats posed by his enemies and false witnesses who spread lies against him. He pleads with God to protect him from their schemes. Verse 13, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Despite the challenges, David holds on to his confidence in God's goodness. 
he anticipates witnessing God's blessing and provisions in his current life, not just in the distant future. Verse 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. David concludes the psalm with a message of encouragement. He encourages himself and others to wait patiently for the Lord's guidance, strength, and deliverance. In times of uncertainty, he advises taking heart and finding strength in the Lord's promises. Dear friend, what you are about to hear is a verse-by-verse -verse commentary on Psalm 91, one of the most powerful psalms that you can pray and declare over your family. As you listen, I want you to be mindful of how in the psalm we witness the many layers of God's protection, guidance, and deliverance for those who place their trust in Him. And that's the key theme throughout this psalm. Put your trust in God. Seek God. Seek His presence. And most importantly, seek to dwell in His presence. And I love this psalm because it constantly assures us that God's sheltering care is available for those who choose to dwell in His presence, leading to a life marked by peace, security, and intimacy with the Almighty. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This verse opens with a declaration of the benefits of dwelling in the presence of God. To dwell in the secret place of the Most High signifies a close and intimate relationship with God. Such a person is promised protection and security, being sheltered under the shadow of the Almighty, which speaks of God's watchful and encompassing care. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. The psalmist expresses personal trust in God as a refuge and fortress. By vocalizing this trust, the psalmist reaffirms their reliance on God's protection and strength. This verse encourages us to openly declare our confidence in God, acknowledging Him as our reliable source of security. Verse 3, Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. The psalmist speaks of God's deliverance from various dangers. The snare of the fowler symbolizes traps set by the enemy, and the perilous pestilence refers to deadly diseases. The verse emphasizes God's ability to rescue His people from both physical and spiritual threats. Verse 4, He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. This verse employs metaphoric language to illustrate God's protection. Just as a bird shields its young under its wings, God provides shelter and refuge. His truth represents His faithful promises acting as a protective shield against harm. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. The psalmist assures that those who trust in God need not fear any form of danger, whether it's the unknown terrors of the night or the threats faced during the day. This verse underscores the peace that comes from trusting in God's security. Verse 6. 
nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Continuing the theme of fearlessness, the verse assures that even in times of sickness, pestilence, or destruction, those who abide in God's shelter need not be afraid. The assurance extends to all moments, whether day or night. Verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. This verse emphasizes the contrast between the fate of the wicked and the safety of those who put their trust in God. The imagery of thousands falling is a vivid depiction of adversity, yet the promise remains that those who rely on God will remain untouched by these troubles. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. In this verse, the psalmist speaks of witnessing the consequences that befall the wicked. The righteous will observe the justice of God being enacted upon those who oppose him. Verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. This verse echoes the sentiments of the beginning, highlighting the choice to make God one's refuge and dwelling place. The result of this choice is a continued experience of God's protection. Verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. The psalmist reassures that those who choose God as their refuge are shielded from evil and harm. The promise extends to protection from any form of disaster or calamity. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. This verse introduces the role of angels as guardians. Angels are appointed to watch over and protect God's people in all aspects of life, ensuring their safety as they navigate life's paths. Verse 12. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Continuing the theme of angelic protection, this verse assures that God's angels will prevent even minor harm, depicted here as not allowing a person to stumble over a stone. Verse 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. This verse uses vivid imagery to illustrate God's empowerment of his people over dangerous creatures. It symbolizes victory over both physical and spiritual adversaries. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. God responds to those who love him and know his name. This verse emphasizes the relationship between love for God and the assurance of his protection and exaltation. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God promises to be attentive to the prayers of those who call upon him. He assures his presence during times of trouble, delivering and honoring those who trust in him. Verse 16. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The psalm concludes with a promise of a long and fulfilling life for those who remain in God's protection. It's 
a final declaration of God's desire to provide both physical well-being and spiritual salvation to those who trust in Him. Father, I confess and I believe your word. The word that says in Psalm 91 verse 10, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. God, your word is true and everlasting. I stand in faith on this scripture. Psalm 91 verse 10. No evil will befall me or my family. No plague will come near my dwelling or my body in Jesus' name. And even though my eyes may not be able to see it right now, Lord, I believe your word. I believe that you have sent your angels to have charge over me, to surround me and my family. You are a God who neither sleeps nor slumbers. You are a mighty and powerful Savior. And so, Lord, I trust that you will deliver me from all of my burdens and all of my frustrations. Lord Jesus, you are ever faithful. You are my hiding place. It's at this present time, I have asked for your protection and for your covering over my life. I have asked for you to cover my family and my loved ones, even at this time where there is uncertainty in this world. Even at this moment where there is a lot of fear and unsettling things. I pray that you would cover us in your shadow. Lord, I believe that you are a God who is still in control, despite what comes my way. You are a God who knows the beginning and the end. I believe that you are a God who provides shelter to your children. You are he who was, who is, and who will forever be. And although I do not know what tomorrow may hold, I do know that your word says in Psalm 37 verse 25 that I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his descendants begging bread. Lord, your word in Jeremiah 17 verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. And so I declare that my trust is in the Lord. I am like a tree planted by the waters, and I am rooted in Jesus Christ. Father, all the honor belongs to you. And I'm praying at this time because, well, Lord, I need you. I need your protection. I need it each and every day. Lord, I need your favor and your mercy. I need them daily. So, Lord, I will seek you and I'll look for direction in you. I will seek you and look for your presence to always be near me always around me. I will look to you, Father, for all of my needs. So I pray that you cover me, Lord. I pray that you cover me each and every day. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What do you do when you come to face the enemy called uncertainty? What do you do when you don't know? When you don't know what the doctor will say? When you don't know if your family members will ever forgive each other? Will my marriage survive this? What do you do when you don't know? I want to encourage you to trust in the God who does know. Trust in the Almighty, because what is unknown to us is known to Him. What is uncertain to us is already certain to him, meaning he knows all. 
He orchestrates it all. He's planned it all so that everything will work out for your good in the end. Psalm chapter 91, verse 14 to 15 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I encourage you to speak the word of God over your life at this moment and declare the watchful eye of my Lord Jesus Christ is upon me. Speak and declare that the hand of the Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is over my life. Dear friend, when you face uncertainty, begin to speak and declare that I will not be destroyed because God is watching over me. The Lord will be the one to guide me. He will be the one to lift me up when I fall. My God is faithful to preserve me during times of uncertainty. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, the Bible reads, Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear the heat when it comes, but its leaves will be green and moist and it will not be anxious and concerned in the year of drought, nor stop bearing fruit. To fully trust in God, we have to relinquish full control. To put it another way, it's to abandon trust in yourself or in another human. You stop trying to fix it yourself, and you follow God. You yield to God. You surrender all control to Him. When you have faith, you lean on God. In the same way that a child will place their trust in a parent, that's the type of faith that pleases the Lord. Faith that looks to God for protection, faith that looks to God for provision. And so, dear friend, I speak this blessing over your life. May the light of Jesus Christ surround you. May his love overwhelm you. May his power protect you. Wherever you are, may God's presence be found. May you be guarded by his presence. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are a holy God. You are a righteous God. You alone are the one who moves mountains and causes walls to fall. We know that regardless of everything happening around us, regardless of the things going on in this world, you are still in control. You are still on your throne. And you are still a good God, one who will never leave us nor forsake us. Psalm chapter 94, verse 19 says, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. In the middle of any uncertain circumstances, you are still a God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. When we are surrounded by the enemy, you are a God who delivers. Should we find ourselves in a multitude of problems, we will call on the name that is above every other name, and that name is Jesus Christ. We trust in you, Lord, to make a way where there seems to be no way. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to split the sea of uncertainty and speak the words, peace, be still, during the storm that we face. We trust in you to be the solution. We trust you to be the chain breaker, to be the way out for whatever it is that comes against us. As I pray in agreement with everyone listening, 
I pray that you give us the strength to stand and to stand strong and to stand an unwavering faith. Be with us as we walk by faith and not by sight. Give us the strength to hold on to the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. You alone are our rock and refuge, so we run to you. I pray for anyone who may be listening right now and they are uncertain about what to do next, where to go, or how to handle what's in front of them. May you give them wisdom and clarity of mind. Your word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Lord, we stand and believe on your word. We come against any confusion in our lives in Jesus' name. For the one who may be listening, and is afraid about what tomorrow holds for themselves and their family, I pray that they may know your word, which says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse one. But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. May we come to know this truth, that we are redeemed and called by you, and you are a just God who holds tomorrow in your hands. For the one who may be listening and is battling with uncertainty and a troubled mind, I pray that they may know your word, which says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. I speak this word into the lives of each and every single person listening. May the peace of Christ rule our hearts. I thank you for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. There must come a time when you, as a believer, must decide. I will stand strong and follow the Word of God, regardless of what I will have to give up and who I will have to let go of. There comes a time when you have to decide. I will stand and do the godly thing. I will forgive even when it's hard to do. Even when I've been hurt. There will come a time when you will have to decide to stand in faith, even when you can't see a way out of the situation that you're in. It is my personal belief that a strong believer in Christ is someone who has no crutches. And when I say crutches, I'm talking about everything apart from God that we put our hope in. A crutch is anything that stops you from completely throwing yourself into the arms of God. Some people trust in the money that they've saved. Others trust in their own ability. Other people put more trust in the opinions of doctors and scientists over God. The word of man has more weight in their hearts than the word of God. But dear listener, we need to remove every crutch in our lives. We need to get to a place where we say either I stand completely trusting in Jesus Christ or I don't stand at all. Either I walk by faith completely trusting in Jesus Christ or I don't walk at all. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. 
God's grace is enough for you to stand strong. God's grace is enough for your family. And you can only find this out when you remove every crutch in your life. And this knowledge of just how much God's grace is sufficient for you only comes when you reach a place where nothing else will do, no one else will do, and for sure, nothing else will work, only Jesus. This should be our prayer. Lord, remove everything I am leaning on that's not you. Remove anything that I'm using as a crutch and help me to see that you are enough. Your grace is sufficient enough. Only Jesus Christ should be the solid rock on which you stand on because all other ground is sinking sand. When you remove every crutch from your life and you cling to Jesus, you will find his word to be true. Isaiah 40 verse 29, it tells us that he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. If you put your trust in people, they will fail you. If you put your trust in material things, they will fail you. If you trust yourself, if you trust in your abilities, you will fail. But some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. We trust in the name that is above every other name and that is Jesus Christ. And so, if you'll remember only one thing from my message today, remember this. Man will fail you. People will fail you. Things will fail you. Money will fail you. But Jesus Christ will never fail you. And now, let us pray. Father, my prayer is that you would always be with me. Be with me as I face the storms of life. Be with me as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Stand by me in the fiery furnace. Stand by me when I can't see a way out. When the enemy comes at me like a flood, raise up a standard, Lord. I pray that you would not allow the challenges that I face to overwhelm me. Lord Jesus, when problems appear to be daunting, give me divine strength. Father, your word says in John 24, verses 18 through 20, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. I thank you, Lord, for such a promise. You have promised never to leave us alone. When the odds are against us, we will not fear, for you are with us. Whether I am in the lion's den or in the eye of a storm, I trust and believe that you will always be faithful and stand by me. Blessed be your name, King Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for the unmerited favor that is upon our lives. We put our trust in you, a God who never fails us. Father, at this time, we ask that you remove every crutch from our lives. May we know you, King Jesus, to be enough. Remove everything that we lean on and trust in so that all that remains is you, Lord. Help us to come to the knowledge and understanding that your grace is indeed sufficient. Your power is indeed made perfect in our weakness. Through all the situations we face, 
May we come to know and to see that your love, King Jesus, is enough. Your grace is enough. Your word is enough. Your joy is enough. And outside of you, Master, we need no one else and nothing else. Psalm 103 verse 8 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. So many things you have given us, Lord, that we do not deserve. So many times you've forgiven us and shown us mercy only for us to fall again. But today, Master, we seek your forgiveness and repent. We thank you because instead of fear, you have given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Instead of sickness, you have given us the assurance that by your stripes we are healed. With all the times that we have sinned and fallen short, you still call for us to repent and follow you. And in addition to that, your arms are still open. Your word in Matthew 11 verse 28 to 29 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We did nothing to deserve this love, yet you still offer it. And so we thank you. We are we're grateful and we appreciate your goodness, Lord Jesus. We do not deserve the protection you offer, but you still give your angels charge over us to keep us safe in our going out and in our coming in. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, we certainly don't deserve the peace you've offered us, but yet you still told us not to let our hearts be troubled because you are a God who supplies all of our needs. Our prayer, Lord, is that we may live in a way that honors you, that pleases you. Thank you for your amazing grace, a grace that saves, a, a grace that forgives and shows us mercy. In your amazing grace, we are safe, we are secure and lack nothing because your grace is sufficient. Your word in 2 Peter 1 verse 2 says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I bless your name, Father, for the grace and peace which you have multiplied in my life and over my family. I am grateful for your love and grace which has transformed my life. I only pray that my life will be an example, a living testimony of your grace and mercy and favor. You have made me an overcomer in this world. You have given me authority through the name of Jesus Christ, authority which enables me to defeat the devil. You, Lord, have made me more than a conqueror. You have made me the head and not the tail. You have placed me above and not beneath. All of these wonderful things are undeserved, but because you are a God who is rich in love, mercy, and grace, you have given me that which I do not deserve, and I am grateful. You, King Jesus, have given me the gift of eternal life because you love me enough to sacrifice your own life and hang on a cross so that I may be saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for pulling me out of a despairing pit and placing me on steady ground. I thank you for making me in your image and in your likeness. I ask that you stay with me and stay by my side always. Great is your faithfulness, Master. Thank you for your amazing grace over my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. 
for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. I was recently watching a documentary about hospital emergencies in New York City. And this particular documentary takes you behind the scenes so that you can see how surgeons, doctors, nurses, how they all respond to medical emergencies. And in one episode, one of the surgeons who had been operating on other people, he actually got into a skiing accident himself. And he needed the help of the people who he worked with. Now, this got me to thinking. This surgeon was always on the other side. He was always on the other side of the emergency room. He was always on the other side of the operating table because he was the one operating. He was the expert telling the patient that everything will be okay. He was always the one giving the news, never the one waiting to receive the news. And that made me think, what happens when it's you? What happens when you're the one who now needs to be encouraged, but you're so used to encouraging others? What happens when you now need others to pray for you, but for so long, you've been the one to pray for others? So often as Christians, we encourage each other. We tell each other to have faith. We tell each other to believe that God will turn it around for you. How many people in our lives have we prayed for? Have we encouraged? We've told them that their miracle is on its way. Their healing is on its way. You know, you know how we do. But at one point in our lives, we will be the ones praying for a miracle in our own lives. At some point in our lives, we'll be the person on the other side. We'll be the patient. We'll be the one in need of encouragement. So, knowing this, what do you do? Well, I'd like for you to pay attention to the words of Jesus in Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. The Bible reads, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents, and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house. It won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. The way that we prepare to face the challenges of life is by building our house on the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. You see, this means that when the rains of life pour down, when the river floods or, or a tornado hits, nothing can move your house. Nothing can move you because you're standing on the solid rock called Jesus Christ. So, while things are well with you, Continue to build your house on Jesus. Continue to stand on the solid rock of ages. And so as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, I just encourage you to remember that one day you will be on the other side. One thing is certain, 
life will present its storms. But there's one thing that is even more certain. If you are rooted in Christ, if you are built on that solid rock, you can withstand. So let's pray and ask God to help us build on Him. Lord Jesus, when life challenges us, stand with us, Lord. When life is difficult, God give us strength to stand firm in faith. Stand by us when life presents us with hardship. Lord, I pray that you would defend us when we are under attack from the enemy. Remind us that your love is forever with us. Remind us that your word in Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When we encounter troubling times in life, Lord, help us to remember that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Lord Jesus, We're looking to you today. Father, we look to you for strength, for direction, for protection, for preservation. We look to you for provision, mercy, and peace. Dear Lord, we're limited. I've looked within myself for strength, (laughs) but I have come to find that I am not strong enough. I've looked within myself for direction, but now I know that I am not wise enough. Oh, I've tried to look within myself for motivation and happiness. But Lord, I have come to find that true joy can only be found when we look to you. Our true purpose can only be found in you. Your word in Psalm 119, verses 36 to 38 says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonest gain and envy. Turn my eyes away from vanity, all those worldly, meaningless things that distract. Let your priorities be mine, and restore me with renewed energy in your ways. Establish your word and confirm your promise to your servant, as that which produces all inspired reverence for you. Lord, turn our eyes away from worldly things. Turn our eyes away from worthless things, God, and help us to have minds fixed on Christ and eyes fixed on Jesus. Because when we look to you, when we focus on you, Master, you'll turn our lives around and you'll demonstrate that you can take us from the lowest of the low and use us for your glory. Help us, Master, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Because if we stray and wander, we will begin to look at what's around us instead of Jesus Christ. This leads us to distractions and that leads us to become preoccupied with things, with situations, with events that don't even matter. We'll become focused on the things that are of this world instead of the things that are eternal. Father, we're limited, whereas you are limitless. We cannot look ahead into the future with our natural eyes. So we look to the one who holds the past, the present, and the future. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you do. For the goodness and mercy you've shown us as your children. We thank you for being so merciful and kind. You are a God who is so good. You're so caring. Your word tells us that you have numbered the hairs on our heads because of your great love for us. Great is your mercy. Great is your love. Psalm 56 verse 3 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Psalm 31, verse 24. Be strong 
and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Be strong, saints, and stand in faith. My need for you is great, Lord Jesus. My need for you is clear. I need you more than I need silver and gold or the riches of this world. I need you, Jesus, more than I need a new car, a new house, or more money. Lord, I cannot save myself. I cannot heal or redeem myself. I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you because I can't give myself eternal life, nor can I overcome sin on my own. It's you that I need, Master. Lord, I have realized that in this life, it is impossible to win. It's impossible to overcome or have victory by myself. Father, there are strongholds that I cannot break. There are problems that I can't overcome on my own. Jesus, I need you. I need the Good Shepherd. I need one who can speak peace and stillness into the storms of life. Lord, I need you to stand by me. Calm my emotions. Let my heart not be troubled. Father, there are giants that I'm facing. Giant oppositions which follow my family bloodline. And Lord, I can't fight them with my own strength. I need divine intervention. I need supernatural strength to overcome. So I pray, Father, hear my cry as I ask that you stand by me, God. Be with me always, because if I try and do things on my own, if I try and live life with my own strength, it simply won't work. Without your grace... Everything is out of my reach. Father, my prayer is that you would always be with me. Be with me as I face the storms of life. Be with me as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Stand by me in the fiery furnace. Stand by me when I can't see a way out. When the enemy comes at me like a flood, raise up a standard, Lord. I pray that you would not allow the challenges that I face to overwhelm me. Lord Jesus, when problems appear to be daunting, give me divine strength. Father, your word says in John 24, verses 18 through 20, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. I thank you, Lord, for such a promise. You have promised never to leave us alone. When the odds are against us, we will not fear, for you are with us. Whether I am in the lion's den or in the eye of a storm, I trust and believe that you will always be faithful and stand by me. Blessed be your name, King Jesus. Amen. The Bible reads, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents, and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house. It won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. 
For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonest gain and envy. Turn my eyes away from vanity, all those worldly, meaningless things that distract. Let your priorities be mine and restore me with renewed energy in your ways. Establish your word and confirm your promise to your servant as that which produces awe-inspired reverence for you. All of us go through tough times. All of us go through seasons where it seems as though the odds are stacked against us and pain becomes a feeling we're all too acquainted with. In Psalms 119 verse 71, David said, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. And I've always asked the question, how can it be good for you to be afflicted? How is there any good for you to go through pain, tribulation, and hard times? But here's the thing. Afflictions, tough situations do more than simply show what kind of character we have. Tough times shape and form out character. Now, I believe that affliction, although unpleasant, is necessary for the Christian man or woman. Because if it were not for the struggle you're going through, how would you know that God will never leave you nor forsake you? If it were not for the affliction in your body, how else would you know that by His stripes we are healed? If it were not for the financial challenges you faced, how would you have known that the Lord is a provider? Problems can sometimes be a blessing, saints of God. So be encouraged regardless of what you're facing. You see, I've realized something. As I've grown both in age and spiritual maturity, my need for the Lord has increased. My need for Him to be with me has increased. My need for the Lord to stand by me has increased. And here's why I have such a need for Jesus. I need Jesus Christ because I have tried to do things my own way. But I've been met with the harsh reality that on my own, it is impossible to win. It's impossible to gain a breakthrough. It's impossible to have peace of mind if the Lord is not with me. I need Jesus Christ because there are strongholds in my family that I can't break with my own power. And so I need the strength and might that's in the blood of Jesus Christ. I need God because life is complicated. I have problems, problems that I care not to discuss with anyone because people will often judge before they reveal their own struggles. So I desperately need Jesus Christ. He's the only one who has given me an open invitation in Psalms 55 verse 22 where the Bible reads, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. So you see, I need Jesus because I can't save myself. I can't redeem myself. I can't deliver myself. And there sure isn't any other human being on this planet who can offer me redemption or salvation or eternal life like Jesus Christ can. So I have to be honest. At times when things are tough, I find myself just saying and praying four simple words over and over again. Be with me, Jesus. Be with me, Lord. At times when I'm tempted, I find myself quietly praying, Give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Jesus. 
And if you can relate to what I'm saying, then I encourage you to stand, child of God. Stand firm in the word of the Lord. Take those things that weigh you down. Take those burdens that slump your shoulders and hand them over to Jesus Christ. Psalms 121 verse 1 and 2 says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is true for you and I today. Our help comes from the Lord. Now let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, your word in Psalm 42 verse 1 says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul does indeed need you, Lord. There are some problems that I can't overcome on my own, so I need your strength, Lord. I need your strength and power to help me overcome the obstacles I face. I need you to stand by me, Lord. Lord Jesus, you are worthy to receive all of my praise and adoration. If troubles weigh us down, your mercy, your grace will lift us up. Although the hardships of life may push us to our limits, by your mercy and by your grace, Lord, we will overcome. Father, the situations we face at times may be tragic and heartbreaking, but we look to you, Lord. By your mercy and by your grace, we are more than conquerors. May your divine will be accomplished in my life. If the trial I face is meant to shape me and mold me in a way that is more pleasing to you, then may your will be done. If the trial I face is meant to build my faith and build my character, then may your will be done, Lord. If the trial I face is meant to train me to become more patient, more prayerful, more grateful, then may your will be done. Father, whatever your will is for allowing me to face difficulty, may you achieve within me that which you have set out to achieve. Transform me, renew me, teach me. Whatever the objective is, I surrender to you, Lord Jesus. Psalms 102 verse 1 and 2 say, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me. In the day of my distress, incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. Lord, hear our cry. When we encounter difficulty, when we're caught in trouble, deliver us and be our help, Father. Your word in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Father, if I am to face difficult times, if I am to endure tough times, may it all be for your glory. I pray that you would use any difficult challenges to build my character. Use those afflictions to strengthen my faith, Lord. Help me to understand that sometimes you may allow afflictions into my life so that I may grow spiritually, so that I may learn to pray with more intensity. Lord, I understand that you are more concerned about my character than my comfort levels. You care more about my growth as a believer than the number of blessings I receive. You, Lord, are more concerned with the state of my heart than the level of my comfort. Your word in Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. It's in you that I can have victory. It's only through you that I can be a victor. Without you, Lord Jesus, 
There are giants I can't fight with my own strength. There are situations that are just too much for me to handle. So I ask that you stand by me, Lord, now and always. Whether I am in a storm or in the valley or in the shadow of death, be with me, Father. Whether I am in a fiery furnace or in the lion's den, I pray that you would raise up a standard. When the enemy comes at me like a flood, Lord Jesus, I look to you. I look to your saving grace. Your word in Psalms 121 verse 7 and 8 says, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. So when the devil attempts to attack me, I will hold on to this word that you, Lord, will keep me from all evil. You will preserve my life. You will not allow any strongholds to overcome me. Though my problems may be daunting, I am at peace knowing that you are with me, Lord Jesus. You have promised that you would never leave me or forsake me. So even when the odds are against me, I will count on you, Lord Jesus. Whether I am in the lion's den or in the eye of the storm, you are faithful. And I believe you will be with me and protect me. Your word in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. I will stand firm on Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I will stand on the lion of the tribe of Judah, my protector. I will stand firm and steadfast in your word, Lord Jesus. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Lord, I choose to trust in you each day, each hour, and each moment of my life. You gave your life on the cross to set me free, and I thank you. Psalms 91 verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I confess this to be true in my life. You are my refuge indeed my hiding place. And so I bless your name, Lord. I give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, give me grace. Let me not become a prayerless Christian, because a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Give me the grace and the discipline to be faithful in my time spent in prayer. Birth in me a desire to seek you, a desire and a passion to chase after you. I rebuke all other desires within me that fight or compete with my prayer time. Reveal to me the things in my life that are distractions or hindrances to my prayer life. I pray that my passions and desires all lead me to one destination, and that is to be in constant fellowship with you through prayer. And sometimes, Lord Jesus, I find it hard to pray. I find it to be a fight just to pray. In those moments, would you strengthen me? Would you convict me, Holy Spirit, to fight through and spend time cultivating a good relationship with God Almighty? Light a fire within my heart. Ignite a fire within my spirit that will lead me to change my lifestyle, to change the way I do things and what I practice on a daily basis. May you be glorified forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 
1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. In Psalm chapter 34, verse 15 to 18, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 5 said, For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. For we do not want to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia, for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us. On him, we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. 